Hello, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. <laughs> Welcome to your 2019 six month forecast. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a look at the first six months of 2019 for you. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a more personal look into your own six months in 2019 or at any moment in time when you're watching this, if you're looking for a, a forecast and overview of what may be coming up for you within the next few months please go ahead and send me an email these are for available for personal consumption yeah so for this reading i'm going to be pulling one card for each month from the major arcana of the dreams of gaia tarot now this is um a fairly new deck to me even though i've had it for some time i haven't really been working with it so i'm going to be reading from the book a little bit for that but then I'm going to be getting some clarification from the traditional tarot. This is the Crystal Visions tarot deck. Yes? So without further ado, Sagittarius, let's get to it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please show us an accurate representation of what could be coming on down the line for Sagittarius for the first six months of the year of 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Sagittarius, so let's just get straight into it, shall we? For your month of January 2019, what do we have for you, Sagittarius? January 2019, we've got emotions, okay? February, ooh, abundance, fantastic. March, March 2019 for you, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. March of 2019, what do we have for you, Sagittarius? March of 2019, this one. The Maiden, okay. Oops, I didn't say anything. So we're gonna put all these back, March. April now. April, 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 April 2019. Ooh, Destiny, okay. May. <laughs> it's just kind of spinning there. Thought, interesting. And June. For Sagittarius 2019, the month of June, what do we have for you, Sagittarius? June 2019, Spirit, what do we have for Sagittarius for June of 2019? See, it's interesting because when May came out, it was thoughts. Ah, here we go. There it is, healing. And what I was what I was saying is May came out and it was thoughts, and it was just, I don't know if you could see it. I think you could actually, but it was just spinning just spinning and spinning and spinning. And so it was interesting that it was taking some time to get the card for June to come out because I feel like Sagittarius May is going to be a pretty chaotic month, we'll say. And it's not something that any that you're ever that you're like really all that not used to. Excuse me, but especially with um, what was what may be going on for April with destiny, I feel like you're going to really be getting in contact with a greater sense of destiny for yourself. Um, and then come May, you're going to have all these thoughts surrounding you. Potentially, how do I go about my destiny? Uh, why haven't I done this before? That kind of energy is like anywhere back and forth between there. There's probably going to be a, a just a chaotic month of all these different thoughts and emotions that are coming up which is interesting because you're starting your year with a focus on the emotions and that's all leading you to a greater understanding of your destiny here. And then by June, I really feel like the healing is going to come come through for you in the sense of really setting yourself on course to take up more of your destiny, all right? So let's get into the specific months here. Starting with January, we do have emotions. Now, what I'm getting from emotions here is you are going probably most likely going to be doing some emotional clearing okay um starting with your birthday season i feel like um this really could have been when this started for you and so now by january you're really looking into your emotions you're really clearing up your emotions this is probably going to be a pretty emotional time for you 
Um, there may, for some of you, there may have been some things that went down with family during the holiday season of 2018, or maybe just 2018 was a really tumultuous month or year for you. And now come January, you know, we're out of the holiday season. We're, January is really, kind, January and February really are kind of like hibernatory, hi, hibernatory months in a way. A lot of people don't really want to be spending any more money because they potentially spent too much during the holiday season. Or you may have just gotten an overload of emotions or energies during the holiday season. And so now in January, you're just processing a lot. Um, and I feel like, especially with all of these waves that are happening, these energetic waves that have been coming through and will continue to come through, um, and all of the changes that we've all been going through over 2018, I feel like for some of you, January is going to hit, everything is going to settle down, and then all of a sudden you're going to be, you're going to have an opportunity to, be, to become aware of more things in your life that could really use some clearing than you may have been aware of in the past for some of you. For others of you, I feel like you already know what emotional clearing you want or need to do going into January, and so now you finally have the opportunity to do that, okay? Let's get some clarification here for you, Sagittarius. Okay, I'm being guided to shuffle one more time. Sagittarius. All right, here we go. So for your month of January, let's get some uh, clarification here, please. Spirit January, Sagittarius. 2019. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first card that's flipping out face up is the Nine of Swords. Um, I'm hearing a tumultuous month for some of you, um, but this is a, a definitely a time of clearing. You have the unknown card underneath the deck. So energies of the unknown are coming up maybe to haunt you for some of you um but it's the energy of not of the unknown that i think that is haunting you even more than what's really going on here and that's really being reflected in the nine of swords energy this is self-fulfilling prophecies these are fears anxieties things that keep you up in the night but these are things that are that have no real basis in reality other than from a fear-based point of view and fear is an illusion Okay, um, and so then we also have, ah, the Knight of Swords in reverse. For some of you, there is an energy of not wanting to fight any longer. Uh, there could be a Gemini in your life or there could be Gemini energy uh, surrounding you like our uh, strong placements in your chart. Lack of communication also. For some of you, this is this is... You're not communicating because of all the fears and anxieties that are coming up for you. Um, you're facing the unknown here. And so you're not wanting to communicate. But I'm also seeing that for some of you, you're not wanting to go in the same old direction, which is helping influence you face your fears here with the Nine of Swords, face the unknown with the unknown card. I feel like some of you have been going in the same direction for extended periods of time because of fear of the unknown, because of, of fear of change in some way, which is not which is not um, something that comes naturally for Sagittarius. Sagittarius, you are a mutable energy, so you guys change on the drop of a hat. Like, change is, or at least a change in direction is kind of your forte. Of all the mutable signs out there, I really feel like Sagittarius, you you handle change quicker and easier, and actually with more pleasure, even, even um, giddiness, excitement, than any of the other mutable signs. So now this could be, I could be channeling for some of you who could have like Sagittarius as a, a moon or a rising or a Venus sign, but then some sort of earth placement. I am picking up that there is a strong earth placement, um, either a strong earth placement or a strong fixed sign placement. Fixed signs would be Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, or uh, Leo. Um, that would keep you from really enjoying change too much because fixed signs do not like change. <laughs> um, it, it, it's really unsettling for them. Uh, but there's definitely, an, uh, I'm hearing ego is coming into play also. Facing your ego, your ego being that energy that's keeping you from from accepting change, causing you to fear change in some way. But I feel like for the the biggest thing about this fear of change for some of you that I am 
Channeling is a fear of having to face yourself or face your emotions, face the unknown that you've got going on underneath the surface within you that are causing you to like hide in fear in some way. You have a chance to clear this up in January, all right? So then moving into February, you have abundance. And I really feel like once you really start clearing up all of this shit, um, all of the stuff that is keeping you emotionally burdened, once you start to get through all that, once I'm really seeing basically that once you start to face your fears, you become aware of this abundance surrounding you. You have the chariot so far. Um, and yeah, it's like you're, uh, you're being... As you become more acquainted with the abundance of the universe, you start to lose, and that, that chips away at this fear of change that some of you are dealing with. And actually, that could be why you have manifested in this lifetime with uh, a Sagittarian energy in a major placement for you, or at least just resonating really strongly with Sagittarian energy. Whoa, we're gonna take all of those. <laughs> Um, resonating strongly with Sagittarian energy because you are here to learn about change. You are here to learn from a mutable sign, which is about change in direction, being flexible, like the ultimate in flexibility, um, being able to basically shape shift or fit into any position that your energies may be needed, okay? That is a major lesson for a lot of you in this lifetime if this fear of change is up is a serious thing for you. Underneath the deck is the Two of Swords. So here is that representation of the fear of change. Here's that representation of not understanding how the abundance of the universe works, yes? Okay, central theme when it comes to this abundance in February is chari is the chariot, but you have the three of pentacles, the queen of wands, the moon, the magician, the five of pentacles, the seven of swords, and the queen of cups. And all of this really makes perfect sense to me in the storyline. So you're starting off with a three of pentacles energy, which is an energy of self-mastery. And that is what's going to help bring this abundance into the forefront for you, self-mastery. Between the queen of wands and the queen of cups these are both cardinal energies the queen of wands representing aries the queen of cups representing ca uh, cancer there could be these energies within you but i really feel like you are starting to break the mold okay becoming emotionally stable because now think about it this way your emotions were on the forefront in january and now that you've reached this emotional stability or you have the potential the potential to reach this emotional stability Stability so that when you get into February, you have an emotional foundation to move forward from, which is which allows you to become more passionate, which allows you to want to really move forward, break the mold for yourself in a cardinal type way with the Queen of Wands, conjuncting, or I'm sorry, in conjunction with the Queen of Cups. So now the Seven of Swords and the Moon. Okay, the Seven of Swords, the Moon, and the Five of Pentacles go together. And you have been deceiving yourself by not believing in the abundance, by not by giving into the fear of the situation. You have been basically leaving yourself out in the cold, stealing from yourself, backstabbing yourself, um, energetically stealing from yourself because you're blocking yourself off from the abundance of the universe all because of this fear of the unknown. But here, as you break through the mold, you have the magician. This is more Aryan energy, okay? Um, you have the ability to manifest whatever it is you desire because of your connection with abundance. Now, I am... And I feel like I should have said this for other signs, but I'm saying this for you now because I'm really feeling called to do so. I am not a fortune teller, okay? I am giving you the energies that's, uh, uh, that are surrounding you so that you can make the best decisions. You still have to be the one to do the work in the situation to help get yourself to this level, okay? So now, you have January and February. January, you're dealing with your emotions. February, you have the potential to get connected with the abundance of the universe. March, you have 
The Maiden. The Maiden is about self-discovery, is about self-expression, it's about self-exploration, um, exploring your own sexuality uh, and sensuality. This is sexual creativity because sexual energy is creative energy. This is about the energies of the virgin, even though you're not necessarily a virgin, it's about virginity in the sense of purity, okay? Bringing yourself back to a sense of childlike purity, okay? With the maiden here. So now that you've gotten, now that you have the opportunity to heal some of your emotional baggage, you are now in the process of connecting with, or you have gotten a firm connection, or at least a new understanding of the relation of the nature of the abundance of the universe. Now you have the potential to do something with that, to take the fertility that is that lies within you, the purity that lies within you, and do something with it in the month of March. The maiden is a very creative energy. The maiden is also the, uh, I want to say the seedling of the mature divine feminine energy, okay? Whereas her counterpart in the maid, uh, I'm sorry, the youth, which is depicted as a masculine energy, is what could be considered the seedling of the divine, of the uh, uh, matured divine feminine, uh, masculine energy. Sorry, I'm getting all tongue-tied here. But <laughs> so for the month of Mar from the month of March, you have the maiden. So let's get some clarification on that for you, Sagittarius. Let's see here. Okay, we've got one card so far for the month of March is Sagittarius. Five of Cups. Okay. Now the Five of Cups, ooh, okay, we have the Hierophant. Hey, look at that. We have the Empress also. So here, here is that mature version of the, the Maiden. Okay, the Divine Feminine, the Empress, all right? Now the Five of Cups did come out, but that what is saying that that's saying to me that this is past energy. You're going to need to really face everything that you feel like you have missed out on in the past, all the regretful energies or whatnot from your past. You're really going to have to release this in order to really move forward with the abundance of the universe. You have the Hierophant here, which flipped over um, and got, <laughs> which flipped over inside the deck. But then, okay, that's that. And underneath the deck, you have the Nine of Cups. So here you go. There is a lot of abundance, especially if you do the work January and February to clear out your emotions and to get connected with the abundance of the universe. The nine, the, the, the maiden, excuse me, between the Maiden, yes, and the Empress. Now understand this is two different decks. The Maiden is card number two. In the, in the regular Arcana, the Empress is card number three. Look at that progression. But they are both very abundant energies, all right? So here you have the activation and the potential to create through the abundance of the universe with the Empress here. And that ultimately will lead you to wish fulfillment, the Nine of Cups. So now, in order to do that, you have to work through the past experiences that have left you feeling, I don't know, guilty, remorseful, like you missed out on some things here. Boop, look at this, you guys. But then also you have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is talking about um, structure, organization, balance. Um, some of you, I'm picking up some of you may be interested in organized religion at this time as some sort of structure for you. And if that helps you, I recommend you do so. I personally am not, uh, I do not really resonate with organized religion anymore, but I do recognize how important it is in the evolution, the spiritual evolution of a human being. I do see it as a stepping stone to universal spirituality. Um, and if this is something that you're looking to work with, Eight of Pentacles, Four of Wands, and the Fool, then I recommend that you do so because I really feel like, especially if it resonates with you, it's going to be really helpful in allowing you to connect further with the abundance of the universe. The Eight of Pentacles is about doing the hard work. And this is the, in, in this case, this is the hard work to manifest what it is you truly desire. You have the four of wands. You could be trying to manifest a new home. You could be trying to manifest a greater state, uh, greater stability within your life for yourself. Um, uh, and also, you could be trying to man working on manifesting a greater stability or foundation within yourself. Okay, internally, not necessarily just externally. But here you have a brand new start with the fool. And all of this is leading up to this through your energies of manifestation, through the work that you're doing 
and through connecting with the abundance of the universe. And it's so perfect that you have the fool because then in April, you've got destiny. So the fool is so perfect coming out in the previous month because destiny, uh, because the fool is leading you towards this energies of starting something new, taking a leap of faith, starting your life over in some way. I really do feel like some of you are going to be connecting more with some sort of organized religion and that's going to help you get you on your path of destiny. Destiny being what it is you are meant to do here, what it is... Um, well, actually, destiny being what it is you have lined yourself up, uh, aligned yourself with in order to or, or to express, to experience further in the future. And I do feel like this has a lot to do with what you came here to experience in life, okay? So let's get some clarification here for destiny for you, Sagittarius, for your month of April. One more shuffle here. All right. I'm sorry, guys. If you, I'm sorry if you hear. Give me just a second. I'm gonna silence my phone because it's going all kinds of crazy right now. Okay. Here we go. So for the month of April for you, Sagittarius. Let's see what we've got for you. Let's get some clarification, please, Spirit for the month of April. Okay, the moon, excellent, excellent. Oh my goodness, guys, look at this. So the moon came out and that's coming out in reverse. Underneath the deck, boop, you've got the nine of pentacles, setting yourself up for success. Or I, I really feel like for the most part, this is already being set up for success here by the time, if you're con considering that you're doing the work as the opportunities present themselves, you are setting yourself up for success. Nine of pentacles is the bachelor bachelorette card. Maybe you will be single, maybe you are single at this point. Um, uh, but this is also a card about rewards for work well done, okay? You put in the effort, especially since the Eight of Pentacles came out for the month of March, you've put in the effort here. And now by the time, or if you have put in the effort, by the time you reach April, you'll be good, you'll be set, you'll be abundant, you'll be happy, you'll be uh, striving, thriving, and achieving, okay? You have the moon in reverse. So this is that fear of the unknown being released, okay? No longer caught up in fear. The potential to be, no longer be caught up in fear. You have the Four of Wands coming out again for this month and it's also coupled with the two of cups so here there's definitely an energy of you are setting yourself up to become uh, to to align with the destiny of balancing masculine and feminine energy within uh, achieving a brand new stability in your life potentially a new home potentially with a new home with a new partner or a new relationship and I really feel like if you're manifesting a new relationship, you're doing it because you're doing the work internally. And that's setting you up for something, some sort of destined, fated event. This could be a new home, this could be a new job, this could be a raise in your job, this could be a new, completely new direction in your life, this could be a new relationship, but all of that hinges on this stability that you have within yourself here with the Four of Wands, okay? Excellent, Sagittarius. So now we're gonna get into the month of May and you have thought. And you remember I, I was mentioning when that card came out, um, it just kept spinning and spinning and spinning. So there's something brand new on the horizon here. You really, I really feel like you have a big opportunity to really change your life around um, in the first six months of 2019, Sagittarius. And that could throw you into a frenzy of thought by the time May comes around. I mean, this is springtime here. And with that symbology, I am seeing um, the budding of brand new ideas, brand new thoughts. It's as if, you know, you got this stability within, okay, worked on that throughout the beginning of the year. And now 
and I, like I, I was seeing this new direction in your life is hinging on the Four of Wands energy that came out, which is success and stability. Um, the thing about the Four of Wands is, yes, you have achieved something. This is definitely a time for celebration, but at the same time, it's not the time to rest on your laurels because there's still more work to do. So even though you have, you you know, you've achieved a new level or a new foundation and you can celebrate, it's still go time all right because now you're sitting like imagine you're on this four of wands energy and you're hinging you could go in any direction and all of a sudden boop your your path changes and now you're on a brand new path and so that allows for fertility to pep to 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 pop in and now you've got all of these different thoughts all of these different ideas ways of of experiencing this different all these different directions to go in and it might be a little confusing it might be a little chaotic but again this is energy that Sagittarius kind of thrives in uh, chaotic energy I feel like um, it's like it, it's almost like it could be home for you and if that is unsettling for you as a Sagittarius I really feel like that's a big part of the lessons that you're here to learn all right so let's get some clarification here for you for the month of May when it comes to thought, yes? Balancing thought, positive and negative, right or wrong, black or white, masculine, feminine, opposing sides. Wow, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> All right. So underneath the deck, you have the High Priestess. And I really feel like this is definitely going to be a month of secrets being revealed. Um, higher learning integrating into your experience. You have the Star and the Page of Pentacles that did flip over inside the deck. Let me just make sure there's nothing else here. A lot did come out for you for this month. Okay, we're good. So, yeah. You have the High Priestess, you have the Page of Pentacles and the Star, so Wish Fulfillment. You have the Unknown card again. Wow. So that, that energy of that lesson of um, needing to not fear the unknown, needing to keep an open mind is coming full circle here. You have healing with the star, a brand new start, a level up even with uh, this is the page of pentacles. You have the unknown and death. So the unknown is that energy of fearing the unknown coming back around, but coming full circle, full transformation through this through this situation. Um, and this could be what could be spinning, sending your thoughts into its tailspin because all of a sudden, yeah, see, look, Eight of Swords. All of a sudden, you have these com these instances coming back up, um, but this is coming back up because you're at a position, you're stronger now, you can look at this situation differently and you can further transform through it. That's fantastic, Sagittarius. You also have, yes, Look at that. All right, so you have the Nine of Swords again, okay? Eight and Nine of Swords, but I'm gonna take that as the final progression here because then you have the Six of Swords. So you're finally moving away from this situation and you're moving forward with the Chariot towards the Ten of Cups ultimate wish fulfillment. This could be some sort of family situation, but this is ultimately allowing you, this is like May is like a month of really doing the final cleanup work when it comes to your thoughts. And you're able to really allow yourself to release these elements, to release this part of your life that really no longer serves you and is keeping you from moving forward. Look at that, six of swords, the Chariot, and the Ten of Cups. I mean, that's a lot of movement, just between the Six of Swords and the, um, the, the Chariot. And there's a lot of healing happening here between the, the Star and the Six of Swords. Lots and lots of mental healing. All right, so finally for you, I mean, oh my God, I didn't even realize it, but then look at this. Leading into the month of June, you have healing. I mean, look at that, Sagittarius. That's freaking awesome. Um, I mean, what else is there to say but just go ahead and get some clarification for this. You know what I mean? Like, we've... Oh, wow. It's, I love it when it works out that way. All right. One more shuffle. Ooh, that came out. All right, so we're going to keep it. Okay. So you're starting out with... Ooh, the star, uh, the whole deck, I believe, was, well, no, keep it this way. The star in reverse and the eight of cups in reverse. All right. 
So let's see. Ah, there's that unknown again. Oh, but look at that, Sagittarius. You have the Eight of Swords again, but this time it's coming out in reverse. And you have the Ten of Wands underneath the deck. You have the Queen of Wands. So look at that, some cardinal energy. And the Queen of Wands, did the, I'm not sure, but you have the Queen of Wands here, Aries energy. I can't remember now if it came out for you earlier. I don't think I did. I think that might have been Scorpio. Yeah, I think that was Scorpio. But you have the Eight of Swords here. And the Eight of Swords is in reverse. So look, this is that final... What I'm Okay, and what I'm getting from this... Uh, this is the final purge that's releasing you from this mental prison. With the Star in reverse and the Eight of Cups in reverse, I really feel like you are completely done. Like, this is the final chapter of healing and walking away from this Eight of Swords energy. All right? Also from this Ten of Wands energy. So for the focus of the month, it could be the burdens that you have been carrying. It might be really seeing the burdens for what they truly are and making that final push to walk away from them, Sagittarius. And you're becoming more confident here with the Queen of Wands and the Unknown. I really feel like for those of you that were struggling with this lesson of not fearing the unknown, it's like you're, you're, you have by now should you have done all the work, you really have mastered this lesson. And it's almost as if you're, you're embracing the unknown. It's like the unknown has gone from your worst enemy to your best friend, okay? And we have the chariot and the four of pentacles. The chariot is coming out again. Four of pentacles can be a miserly energy, but coupled with the chariot, especially in the focus of healing for this month of June, I don't see this as a miserly, miserly energy. I see this as holding on to everything that you have learned, the lessons that you have learned, and taking that and moving forward as a sort of foundation for you in the physical realm. It's like everything has come full circle for you up until the month of June, and now everything that you've learned and experienced in the past, that could be the past six months, you know, since the, since the beginning of 2019, or it could even extend past 19, all the way back years in, in, in the past. Um, everything that you've experienced and learned and now grown from, should you, should you have done the work, uh, becomes a solid foundational base for you to really thrive and strive in, uh, strive and thrive within the physical realm in this life, in this reality for you. All right, Sagittarius, so there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. If you would like a look at your personal endeavors, please go ahead and shoot me an email. Like I said, these are available for personal consumption. I wish you all a fantastic 2019, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.